I, I really feel that when I make the best stuff, I am actually not even there. I'm just, just a, 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 a channel or a tool for something. It comes from a different source. You know, I know it sounds all mystical and shamanic and all of that. And, and really, I, you know, people have labelled me in that, that, that way. There was a comedian, uh, Eric Sykes, who was a very torn, chewed up you know, kind of person. And it was a, I think it was Max Miller or somebody who said to him, the thing is, you don't trust it. You know, you're on, you're, it just because it comes out of you so easy doesn't mean that it's not, you know that it that it, it's rubbish. You've just got to trust it. Well, I'm interested to know if we can go back right to the beginning. You you touched on it briefly this morning about those early works. Um, mm. For someone to go into the visual arts and to say that it's not about what you see but what it is, because you can't have got into art college without having made things that were visual. What? Uh, was there a moment that was? Oh, I, I mean, I, 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 th I think everything is very visual to <laughs> the me. Actual, uh, it, so it's, it's, but it's almost as if for you, and that, I think that's what makes you so unique, is that the visual is almost secondary to to what yeah. you feel the thing is. You can't what, ignore it. No. What? What? Ha when did that? When did you sort of first recognise that? It was a hanging figure, because you're dealing with with materials, which are um, you can't mess around. This, you know, you you have to treat this. With complete respect, so uh, and you know, and I, I felt that because you're dealing with with actual human uh, bones, the meat from an animal, you know that, um, and it's a mistake to to treat with animals with contempt and disrespect, because that's what this was the beginning of the mad cow thing. So in in a way, I almost was, you know, I think Sinclair calls me a, t a canary in the bottom of a mind, you know. It was after that piece, that's when mad cow disease kind of came up. And I, I could see that the way that animals and things were being treated. So I, I treated with equal respect. And I wasn't making a portrait, but making something that, that, that was a, a presence. And so when you work with that, you know, putting the heart and the liver, I didn't need to put the heart and the liver in. I could have just put a, a couple of old cardboard boxes in or something, you know. Um, or, or I could have... Uh, do all sorts of different ways of doing it, but actually you were making something which all the way through from start to finish it has to have that kind of concentration and that, um, that, that respect, and that means that, that, that you're not just making something just to look at. Uh, it, it does seem that problem solving is very much a part of sculptors, you know, attraction to, to that genre, and you, you definitely seem to have Taking it beyond. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I used a to. Level. I do. Yeah, I yeah. used to spend hours uh, just trying to figure out how how to do it. Just how do I get to that point? And and you go through endless permutations. I love the thing of watchmakers, and I remember having a conversation with him, and he was showing me these watches from I think from the 18th century, and he was saying nobody knows how they made them, because you know I mean they didn't have electricity and they only had candles and you know and. They couldn't make that today under these conditions, don't know how, but they, they, you know, he would make a tool to make a tool to make a tool so you could make something else. And I think the thing about Harris is that it feel, I, always felt, I feel as there is, and felt right from the start, there is a kind of a, an energy that runs underground. You know, it, it is a timeless landscape. There, there are uh, rocks and, and things there that have been there since the Vikings and be, before really, you, and you can pick up something, and it, <laughs> you know, it, it, it just defies the, the length of our lives, you know. So you, we see ourselves very much a fleeting part of it, and I, you know, and it, the, the things I make kind of make sense in that place. And then when you take them out of it, you know, they 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 have another. They they seem to take on a different identity. They have another sense, perhaps. And, and but why we allow people to yeah. connect with it mm. too. Well, that's that's another thing. I, I find them very emotionally open. It's not like um, a sort of pieta where you're 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 being fed what emotion you're supposed to be feeling about um, that image. You know, I, I'm always surprised what people say. What people come to me with something, and you know, okay, they could be uh, kind of emotionally um, charged, and it, it's one of the the, the 
the most precious thing to find that you've actually made a difference, you know, in someone's life. Yeah. And that in a thousand year years time, they could stumble across some of your objects and not know when they've been made, and mm. but still, I, I honestly feel that they would still feel a, a charge and a, and a presence. So um, I think that's what's very unique mm. about you as well. well I, li I like to think if, if you just, yes, if you just found it without any context of, of anything else, they just came across it in a junk store. They might not know what it is, but you know it, it's something. You know, you know I, I think of cave paintings, you know, the, that they were painted um, with precious little light, whatever they could manage from a little bit of oil burning from you know, 30,000 years ago to create these things in a place that, that you can't even see it, you know, that because you're never actually going to be able to light the whole thing up with, with, with torches. You may be able to get a flicking light here or there, but to be able, but to know that they're on, they're in this, you know, and to feel have that presence. I mean, what could be more profound? What could be more contemporary than that? I mean, how can we ever get more? Well, you say that, Steve, but you're you're the only person that I know that that is a sculptor who doesn't want to be seen. So you'll go and hide something, or you 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 want the thing to be experienced in the dark. It, it, it's it's quite unusual to have somebody who feels that in a completely different way. You're not you're not shouting. You know, most sculptors want to do it as big as they possibly can and to be seen in the best place. And it, where do you think that comes from? Is that so? So I make things that you that that that, that you can't see. And you know that, uh, well, it's your job to sell the bloody things. Well, exactly. I mean, thanks very much. Uh, yeah. It's really easy. Yeah. I mean, I think if you that's did the it, easy bit. <laughs> if you, <laughs> thanks. I, I know somebody once said it in an exhibition, um, uh, that there's a throwing object and, and it had a bird inside. And she said, well, how do I know there's a bird inside there? And what I actually said was, well, you can buy it smash it up, and if there's no bird inside, <laughs> you get your money back. And your approach to time is, is, is amazing. Do you think Harris has given you that? Um... When God made time, they gave Harris plenty of it, is what is the saying that's there. But I've been doing it now really for near enough 50 years. And certainly for the first 20, I, I made absolutely no money whatsoever, not a sale, you know. Um, so you need to, you need to be somehow driven and insane, <laughs> that helps quite a lot. <laughs>